Hi und willkommen wieder bei Sarah's Music. Das Tolle an dieser Sendung sind die ganz vielen Musikgenres, die ich mit euch entdecken kann. Und heute tauchen wir in die Welt von elektronischen und Clubmusik ein, mit Hilfe einer der innovativsten und erfolgreichsten Musiker aus dieser Szene, der Komponist, DJ und Produzent Henrik Schwarz. Henrik versucht immer wieder musikalische Grenzen zu verschieben. 2015 erschien seine CD Instruments, auf der seine Club-Hits von klassischen Musikern gespielt wurden, ohne elektronische Beats. Heute spielt das Deutsche Kammerorchester Berlin zwei seiner Stücke in der Konzertreihe Neuer Meister. Und das in dieser coolen Location, dem Volkswagen Drive in Berlin. Henrik ist im Publikum und ich darf den Hornpart spielen. Sehr schön. Ähm, wir hören ein bisschen zu wenig von den Fagotten, aber ich glaube, das ist mehr eine Misch, äh, Mischsache vom, von der PA. Ja. Ähm, dann dachte ich, wenn die Gran Casa zum zweiten Mal kommt, das war ein bisschen laut am Anfang. Und zwar viel, sehr gut. Ja. Ja. Henrik, it's great to see you and it's great to be part of this event today. Why do you put your music onto classical music instruments? For us, um, electronics and Everything that the computer can do is our instrument, so that's what we play. And I find it always interesting to yeah, work together with people. And if there's a, um, a musician as a source and an acoustic instrument as a source, it is uh, a huge difference um, from the way people get touched by what actually comes out. You didn't read music before, but now you've done all these the, the arrangements yourself, you told me. Incredible. After I worked with an orchestra for the first time, I thought, um, you have to learn a little bit because there's so much knowledge involved there and if you if you want to talk with them you have to know what what they are talking about and so i took piano lessons and i learned to read music and write music and uh uh it's still kind of uh at a very early stage but it works what are the challenges of putting your electronic music onto acoustic instruments well rhythm is very difficult for classical musicians and i was um, just about to say these mu these parts are quite hard to, to count and quite hard to, to get the rhythm exactly perfect also we're quite far apart from each yes other this is something stage. i had to learn especially from the writing the arrangements because i think there is if you write it you can help the musicians if you write it in the right way and this is something I have learned now over, it took really long to find that out because the distance is long. And uh, for us in electronic music, uh, I don't know, 15 milliseconds uh, can destroy a groove and then our music doesn't work anymore. But uh, I find that the most challenging part of uh, taking what, what I do to an orchestra because that's, that's the very, very important thing, more than tuning, uh, is the rhythmical thing um, and also uh, the change of speed this is also something I had to learn because in the beginning I was like why can't they just uh, touch it or just stay on that groove and and then I had to learn I take like half of their expression away because the orchestra musicians they work with speed they learn how to do it and then we come and we tell them to play to a click and so that it's wrong <laughs> 
uh, but there has to be a solution for that. When you, you're playing your music in the clubs, which you do at terrible times of the night for me, you start like yeah. at one o'clock and play till five. It and would you, be early, yeah. It would be early, <laughs> yeah. you whip them up and then you calm them down, then you whip them up again. When, you, when your music is played for a classical music, music audience, I mean, look, they sit down and they listen and it, everybody in the clubs are moving, it's this seething mass and that, that gives you a lot of energy. Is it strange for you to see these people sitting and listening like this? No. Um, for me, it's an exchange of energy and that works with a seated audience in the same way like with a dancing audience. It's um, what what we as performers do, or I, or I see it, I, you throw a spark into the room and then you get a, if you're lucky, you get a thunderstorm back and you could even get that from a seated audience because you can feel it if, if there is something happening out there or not. Gabriel Hut ab, du hast einen unglaublichen Job heute, Konzertmeister und Dirigent. Wie ist es für dich, diese Stücke jetzt hier zu, zu leiten? Das ist äh, sehr spannend. Also wir hatten eigentlich vor, das meiste oder fast alles ohne Dirigenten zu machen. Jetzt hat sich herausgestellt, dass es dann bei zwei Stücken doch leider nicht ging, weil es zu kompliziert war. Und manchmal bei einem Stück bin ich sozusagen das Metronom. Was sind die Schwierigkeiten für euch als, als, als so klassische Kammerorchester? Ähm, also manche Sachen sind eigentlich leichter als im klassischen Kammerorchester, weil es ähm, weniger so Interpretationsspielraum ähm, gibt. Aber zum Beispiel der Rhythmus ist, ist irrsinnig schwierig, dass man wie ein Computer genau der spielt. Musik, klassische Musiker sind nicht so diese nee, so Computerrhythmus. Manchmal Freiheiten nehmen. Ich dachte, es wäre spannend, Henrik live bei der Arbeit zu erleben und dachte, ich spiele was auf mein Horn und er könnte es samplen. Ja, yeah, so in a way, you, you just start with something and then we see what comes out. We love it when people say just start with something. Yeah, I know. We need music and a conductor and a room. I'll just <laughs> something's okay. gonna come. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> that sounded very classical. Yeah, that's fine. It's gonna change soon. <laughs> uh, so what exactly are you doing? Well, what I would start now is I grab what you have just played, I drop it into here, mm -hmm. and then it's already on my keyboard. Okay. It's very interesting if the horn uh, turns into something else, and it's, it can be done very easy by um, just, for example, pitching it, and you have a bass sound. You're feeling incredibly cool right now. It's a nice feeling for a classical musician. <laughs> He's such a quick worker, it's just like incredible. Mozart would have been impressed. Um, well, if, if he had that thing, uh, if it would have been very interesting to see what he would have done with it. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Yeah. If, if I do stuff like this, I would just like play around with what I have mm -hmm. recorded. And, and then if I play a tiny little bit of Mozart in there, what would you do with it? Let's try. Let's try. Mozart and electronic music. That sounded so square, so serious. So I would first I, I would try to adjust it to yeah. the same tempo. Yeah. So it could be half time or <laughs> I just can go if 
you really work on it, it can go uh, it could take and a lead to something. Yeah. Das war's von Sarah's Music für heute. Das Konzert geht gleich los und hier darf das Publikum seine Getränke mit reinnehmen. Was für eine tolle Idee. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. You play the computer and now you're playing the piano, but have you ever played a horn? Never. Well, today is your lucky day. I knew it was coming. Just put your hand in the bell. I'm left hand. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. Well, <laughs> I have to rehearse. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Great.